नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स मैं डॉक्टर संदीप जोत मेरे साथ डॉक्टर एस रंजन आपका बहुत स्वागत करते हैं हमारे चैनल स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर फॉर होलिस्टिक हेल्थ में नमस्कार साथियों एवरी लाइक एवरी संडे वी आर अगेन हेयर विद अनदर जेम अनदर स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर हु इज ट्राइंग टू एजुकेट फॉर होलिस्टिक हेल्थ डॉक्टर चंदना इज ए कार्डिक सर्जन फ्रॉम बेंगलोर स्क्रीन पे भी आप देख सकते हैं शॉर्ट प्रोफाइल मेंशन है हमारे स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर्स फॉर होलिस्टिक हेल्थ पर अभी तक चार हार्ट स्पेशलिस्ट आ चुके हैं सबसे पहले डॉक्टर मोहित गुप्ता आए थे उन्होंने हैप्पीनेस एंड जीन पर बोला था फिर यूएस से हमारे साथ डॉक्टर कहान जुड़े थे फिर पतंजलि योग दर्शन पर बोलने के लिए ऋषिकेश से कार्डिक सर्जन जुड़े थे डॉक्टर सत्संगी और आज हमारे साथ फिर से एक कार्डिक सर्जन है डॉक्टर चंदना डॉक्टर रंजन जब डॉक्टर संदीप कार्डिक सर्जन जब कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट हमारे साथ बात करते हैं और वो हैप्पी हार्ट और हेल्दी हार्ट की बात करते हैं और वो होलिस्टिक हेल्थ की बातें करते हैं और जो खुद वो उस चीज को प्रैक्टिस करते हैं ये जान के बड़ी खुशी होती है uh, मैंने पहले भी शेयर किया था मेरा जो इंटर्नशिप के बाद फर्स्ट जॉब थी दैट वॉज इन कार्डिक हॉस्पिटल तो वहां पे मैं देखता था सुबह शाम मतलब देर इज नो टॉक अबाउट फूड नथिंग अबाउट सोशल रिलेशनशिप नथिंग अबाउट चक्र वहाँ पे वही मेडिसिन चल रही हैं और एकदम से वो भाग दौड़ रहे हैं और ह्यूमन टच नेग्लिजिबल है और आज ही सुबह मैंने अपने व्हाट्सएप पे एक मैसेज मिला मुझे जिसमें उन्होंने बात किया कि डॉक्टर्स को ये सब चीजें फॉलो करनी चाहिए उनको पता होनी चाहिए और बहुत सारी चीजें डॉक्टर्स को होलिस्टिक हेल्थ क्या होती है कैसे हमारे चक्रास काम करते हैं कैसे अल्टरनेटिव वे वे ऑफ हीलिंग भी है हम हार्ट चक्रा को अंदाज कर सकते हैं उसको हील कर सकते हैं सिर्फ स्टेंट डालना या स्टेटिन देना ही एक इलाज नहीं है इसके और भी बहुत सारी विधियां हैं जैसे कि आज हमारे साथ कार्डियोथेरेपी सर्जन डॉक्टर चंदना जुड़ेंगी शी इज फ्रॉम बेंगलोर वर्किंग इन ए गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल शी इज इनटू होलिस्टिक मेडिकल एजुकेशन सिंस द टाइम शी वाज इन एमबीबीएस स्टडीज चक्रास व्हेन शी वाज साइमल्टेनियसली विद एनाटॉमी एंड फिजियोलॉजी शी हैज लर्नड प्रैक्टिस्ड वेरियस एनर्जी हीलिंग मॉडलिटीज लाइक रेकी प्राणिक हीलिंग मैग्नीफाइड हीलिंग्स एंड Graphotherapy. These are the few things uh, we know, and the uh, most important thing I love and appreciate about Dr. Chandna is she is a photographer. She is nature loving from heart. And there is a study that the jolo uh, nature ke kareeb rehte hain, aur jinke social bondings achhi hoti hain, unka heart strong hota hai, wo jada happy hote hain, aur wo jada lambi umar jite hain. और इन सब चीजों के बारे में अगर हम हार्ट सर्जन से एक कार्डियोथेरेपी सर्जन से जो कि एक्सपर्ट हैं और जो कि हार्ट को खोल के पास में से देखते हैं जो अपना हार्ट जो ऐसे बना होता है फोटोग्राफ में वैसा नहीं होता है वो उसका कलर अलग होता है उसकी शेप अलग होती है उनसे सुनेंगे कि उनके एक्सपीरियंसिस क्या है उनके पेशेंट के साथ कैसे एक्सपीरियंस है तो दैट विल रियली एनलाइटिंग फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस वी आर फॉर्चुनेट एवरी संडे हमारे साथ ऐसे डॉक्टर्स जुड़ते हैं जो होलिस्टिक हेल्थ के ऊपर काम कर रहे हैं जेम्स इन दमसेल्फ हम सिर्फ एक माध्यम बनते हैं उनको आप तक पहुंचाने के लिए और उनकी बातें जो है कितने लोगों को ट्रांसफॉर्म कर सकती है कितनी ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ला सकती है एंड वी आर वॉचिंग एवरी वीक जो हमारे पास कंप्लीमेंट्स आ रहे हैं जो हमारे पास ब्लेसिंग आ रही है Uh, we are really, really thankful for everything, Dr. Anjan. Yes, हमारे हार्ट का हेल्दी रहना बहुत जरूरी है और हमारे साथ अलग अलग हार्ट स्पेशलिस्ट जुड़ते रहते हैं स्पिरिचुअल डॉक्टर्स फॉर होलिस्टिक हेल्थ पर अगर आप आ गए आपने हमारे प्रोग्राम देखने शुरू कर दिए तो आपके लिए हेल्थ विद कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ स्पिरिचुअल हेल्थ बहुत ईजी हो जाएगा ऐसा हम लोगों का प्रयास है और जो हमारे रेगुलर पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं वह भी इस बात को महसूस कर रहे होंगे हेल्थ उतना मुश्किल नहीं है जितना आम भाषा में आम लोग समझते हैं थोड़ी सी नॉलेज की जरूरत है थोड़ी अंडरस्टैंडिंग की जरूरत है थोड़े कंसेप्ट चाहिए और उसी कंसेप्ट के साथ हमारे साथ जुड़ रही हैं बेंगलोर से डॉक्टर चंदना वेलकम डॉक्टर चंदना आपका स्वागत है हमारे प्लेटफॉर्म पर Thank you, thank you so much, Dr. Saurabh and uh, Dr. Sandeep. It's a pleasure interacting with you both. And first, I would like to thank you both for calling me on to this. It's uh, 
really a nice group and uh, i feel that my spirituality has become more active after joining your group i feel now i'm consciously trying to you know be on the track as i like say so i am really happy to be in this group and Thank i want to share teacher. a few things which i don't want to preach uh, to anybody but i want to share my experience uh, uh, let's see how it uh, you know affects people or whatever they want to know a little bit of things uh, which i know I, over the period of time uh, i have studied spiritual books and i have studied the anatomy so it was a wonderful learning experience for me um, because i could relate like you know spiritual uh, stuff can be easily related when you are reading anatomy textbooks or with, when you are reading physiology you'll read about the nerve plexus so that is how uh, you know uh, uh, like medical field also became very interesting to me because i it was happening simultaneously so um, with this small uh, intro i would like to start off so happy morning everyone and uh, welcome for this uh, program it's a it's an amazing opportunity for me to be here so i'll be talking about happy heart so um, as a cardiac surgeon uh, most often i'll be dealing with the illness so that is what we are often seeing in our hospitals so from illness we have to move towards wellness and eventually to happiness so this is my talk for today so so there are a lot of medicos and a lot of non medicos in this group so i would like to just uh, show a picture of the heart so what is a heart we know that heart is one of the most essential organ for our existence without the heart we can't exist without any organ for that matter but heart is important because it is the one which keeps all the organs alive and all the cells alive so this is how a heart looks so heart is nothing but it's a a uh, muscular pump so it is the size of a clenched fist sits behind the breast bone and it is slightly towards the left so in the picture you can see here that it has four chambers now all this has been taught in the high school days in the medical books everything but just to recapitulate it also has three major coronary arteries which supply blood to it so this is the basic anatomical structure of the heart so um for this uh, what are the kinds of illness or what is the, what are the type of diseases that can present so most often if you ask the common person what they know about the heart is that heart can have heart attack so that is the coronary artery disease which is the most common uh, disease that we encounter and then we have heard of hole in the heart that's what even the movies show about or movies talk about so the congenital heart diseases so which are there from birth then the aortic diseases and abnormal heart rhythms and arrhythmias so these are wide spectrum of uh, diseases and uh, they can present in various ways so uh, here this is a picture showing how a normal valve looks so the disease disease can affect the valves it can affect the uh, aorta it can affect the arteries which are supplying the heart themselves it can there can be rhythm disturbances in the conduction system there can be heart failure because of the uh, dilated ventricles there can be cardiomyopathy so here we have a range of uh, a range or a spectrum of diseases apart from this you have congenital heart diseases also which are there which are genetic which are there from the birth so what are the common symptoms like whenever a patient has symptoms like chest pain giddiness shortness of breath or dyspnea then palpitations like that that is the subjective awareness of one's own heart beating and if there is uh, sweating and uh, in small kids if the uh, baby presents with uh, bluish discoloration of the lips and fingertips then posit- it all points out towards some kind of abnormality of the heart these are all like broad pointers so then we need to investigate and find out because these symptoms can also occur with uh, any disease in the lungs so it, since lungs and heart are together so obviously uh, we need to take care of we need to first delineate it whether it is the cardiac symptoms or whether the symptoms are from the lungs or something else which is happening so um, atherosclerosis is the one major one which is the i would say a very important factor for causing uh, 
uh, coronary artery disease. So if you see here, uh, the valve disease, as I, it's usually because of the rheumatic heart disease, that is uh, mainly because of the uh, streptococcal infection. Over a period of time, the valves get destroyed. And uh, then we, we, if they go into the severe form, they will require su surgical uh, replacement. Then uh, if it is rhythm disturbances, then that has to be tackled in a different way. So coronary artery disease, as you can see in the picture, you can see the atherosclerotic plaque here, which is forming and which is occluding the arteries. But uh, you know, whatever the blood is flowing, it will not be able to reach the heart muscle. So that is why when a person will have chest pain. So that is the reason for all these symptoms. So uh, of all these things, atherosclerosis is one thing which starts off uh, with about even six months of age. That is like from there, it, it starts off in a very small uh, this thing and it, it progresses. So uh, for every person, there is some amount of atherosclerosis, some small amount. It depends on like their genetic uh, uh, predisposition. Then apart from that, their cholesterol levels, triglyceride levels, if they have other comorbidities, that's when this atherosclerosis progresses at a faster rate in such individuals. So uh, that, that is, uh, this is one of the dreaded culprits. So here you can see that there is a plaque which has formed and which has occluded the blood vessel. So whatever blood has to flow and reach the muscle doesn't reach. And then you have a part of the muscle dying out. So that is how atherosclerosis causes heart attack, which is what we commonly encounter. So how do we diagnose them? How do we differentiate? So whether it's arising from the heart, it's arising from the lungs, some symptoms which are common to both, we have to first delineate. So we have various blood tests to know whether it is the cardiac, um, it is because of the cardiac origin. Like for example, you have the um, troponin, uh, troponin levels, you have the uh, CKMB levels. So all these uh, enzymes mainly we test them out and find out whether patient is already is really having a cardiac event. So chest X-ray, ECG, as you know, uh, it shows the electrical activity of the heart, and echocardiogram is something like an ultrasound uh, of the heart. So uh, these are the basic modalities which in any emergency setting in uh, cardiac setups or even in the regular physicians will be having these tests. So that is how they'll know uh, if, you know, there is some cardiac event happening and then they can either treat it or refer to a higher center. So apart from this, now when the patient reaches the higher center or if there are facilities available, then he will be subjected to further tests like a cardiac catheterization or uh, to, if, uh, to see if, for example, if the ECG is showing some heart attack changes, that is myocardial infarction, as we call it. So then they will undergo further investigations like uh, angiogram, angiography can be done to see if there are any blocks, if whether the patient needs stenting or whether we need to uh, uh, manage it in a different way. Like maybe if the, if the blocks are too many, then maybe a surgical management. So if there is a patient with the rhythm disturbances or something else which is causing it, then they, they will be advised to uh, uh, monitor the heart rhythm through a halter for a period of 24 hours. And then th there is another stream uh, which deals totally with it, that is the electrophysiologist. So what are the treatment options available? So one is a bypass surgery. Everybody is familiar with it. Sabko malum hai ki heart attack hua, bypass surgery who are like you know it's a very common thing so then next is the valve replacement surgeries like mainly the aortic valve and mitral valve so mainly these valves are the ones which need replacement and uh, if you know uh, we can't medically manage it goes into replacement stage then there are congenital defects like what we call hole in the heart then um, that has to be closed surgically again or even or by device so intervention or a surgery is needed. So aortic surgeries, aorta mein kya ho sakta hai? Like you can have dissections, you can have aneurysms. So that has to be dealt with, with aortic surgeries. Then as I said, rhythm disturbance hai to, pacemaker ya kuch, you know, the radio frequency ablations, all these things have to be done. 
So when eventually with everything like, you know, patient is going into heart failure or needing assist devices and uh, later on even these, they are not okay, then patient will require a transplant. So that way you have various spectrum of diseases and various modalities to treat it, various surgical options, various interventional options. So depending on the uh, uh, patient's, what, whatever the medical condition the patient has. So I'm sharing a few pictures here showing, uh, the first picture is showing uh, bypass surgery. The second one is showing the valve replacement. And this is the third one, which is showing where we have replaced a part of the iota with a graft. So I don't want to show too many pictures and scare people. <laughs> okay, so now uh, from illness, let's move towards wellness. So we have spoken enough about illness and scared also people with all that. So now uh, let's talk about wellness. So well-being is what is important. And that is, the, uh, that is the step which we need to achieve. So the wellness of the heart is dependent on all the lifestyle modifications that we can make. So what are the lifestyle modifications that we know of? All of us know that we have to quit smoking. Any movie theater you sit into will tell you the same thing. Quit smoking, quit alcohol. So... Uh, so we also start off with the same thing. So all forms of tobacco have to be stopped. Why? Why is it? Why is it so important? Because smoking, as such, will cause all these things. That is, it causes the damage. Uh, it damages the endothelium. That is the inner lining of the blood vessels. So when there is inflammation here, uh, it causes further damage and progresses into atherosclerosis. You, uh, it causes the rise in the LDL cholesterol, which is known as the bad cholesterol. Then it raises the blood pressure, raises the heart rate. So when you compare to the non-smokers, in, in case of uh, smokers, what is the risk of heart attack? So it is more than six times in women smokers and more than three times in men smokers. Dr. Chandna, uh, uh, can I ask a question here? Yes, sure. This is a very personal question. Take it as uh, not a doctor asking, but a layman asking. Uh, okay. Because from this slide, something came into my mind uh, that okay. uh, you are working in a government hospital and uh, mm. we everyone knows about this thing. On Even on the uh, packet of smoke, that cigarette also, there is yeah. a big picture and there are rules that so much uh, uh, that the packet should be covered with the dangerous signs and other things. So my question is uh, from a doctor who is working in the hospital and you must be having so many other junior doctors also who are working with you. Yes. Then how much time is spent on the patient or a person who came with some heart problem for counseling him and to motivate him to follow these kind of things by you and the doctors in your hospital? Just asking. Yeah, so uh, when we take history, uh, that's when uh, this is, I'm talking about myself. So whenever I take history about the patient, whenever I visit them in the ward, I see them for the first time, I do ask them about the smoking history. And the first thing I tell them is, so all this has happened because of the smoking. So that itself is enough to like kind of put, the, put it into their brain that, okay, this is the culprit. So most often what I have seen is like, uh, during the history taking itself, we would have spoken. And also during the time of discharge, we make it a point to tell them to, uh, you know, give up. So counseling is done and we do tell them about it and uh, some of them follow, some of them don't. So Thank you. wherever, whenever Thank we you. can help, we do keep telling them, even in the OPD, I keep telling patients. So um, most often it's not the patient who tells in the OPD, it is the attenders, usually the wives who come and tell me that, you know, he smokes a lot of cigarettes and please advise him. So it, it does happen and we do keep talking about it. So right. despite that, there are doctors also who smoke, so I don't know what to tell. So thank I think you, it's you. like, uh, it's all about yeah. self-motivation, I guess. Exactly. So, thank you, Dr. Chandra. Yeah. Uh, so smoking also increases the risk of stroke. So just the way the heart, um, blood vessels in the heart are affected. Similarly, even the blood vessels, which are supplying other organs like the brain, the all the other organs will also start getting affected so that is how there will be uh, manifestations like stroke or even peripheral vascular diseases what we call causing gangrene of the toes and all those things will start happening so uh, limit alcohol intake so 
I, I don't want to say quit uh, because I am sure it's very difficult for people because all the, even in the medical conferences, it's like the, you know, like a lot of it is like, you know, most of the dinners are with, uh, there will be some amount of alcohol. So I would say limit the alcohol intake. And uh, why? Because again, alcohol is also known to cause high blood pressure, stroke, obesity, and leads to the increased levels of triglycerides. And we all know about it. We have read in the medical uh, colleges that it causes pancreatitis and eventually liver cirrhosis. So it's better if it can be limited or if you can uh, totally stay uh, away from it, well and good. That's real. That would be the best thing. Then uh, coming to maintaining ideal body weight. So this, again, is one of the factors. Then um, regular screening of blood pressure, blood sugar levels, and um, triglyceride levels and cholesterol levels is another important thing. So all these things, lifestyle modifications are important so that uh, I've just put up a few values like uh, randomly, like just to say how much it should be. So um, around this, this is the uh, range, like total cholesterol should be less than 200, LDL should be less than 70, and HDL is like, ideally should be more than 60, and triglyceride should be less than 150. So these are the lifestyle modifications that we can uh, do. So how to do all these things, another important thing that is um, very important thing I would say is to incorporate exercises into daily routine. So yeah, we all lead busy lives and it is difficult to do all this, but still we have to make it a point, make it a habit and uh, have at least uh, what and whatever I'm quoting here is from the American Heart Association, whatever those guidelines they have put it up. So they recommend that at least 30 minutes of uh, uh, moderate intensity aerobic exercises five times in a week at least should be done. So, and uh, weight training is again important and it has to be incorporated at least two days in a week. So, uh, I would also like to say that don't overdo this either. So, that is also not good for the heart. Can you elaborate uh, Ramchandana, why we should not do overdo? Uh... No, overdoing again will cause uh, like, you know, too much of uh, anything is not good. So it's similar to that, they say that overdoing, like somebody, if somebody is totally into, you know, uh, for the sake of uh, becoming uh, thin and having like a supermodel figure, it's like, you know, if you go on exercising too much, over exercising is also not good. So that also has a negative impact on the heart. So that's the reason they say that that also should not be overdone. And uh, only like, you know, we have to start gradually and build up on it. All right. So that is uh, rather than like, you know, hitting the gym and uh, working out for one or two hours. And then, you know, you should not, we shouldn't be starting off like that. So we should start gradually, gradually increase the time duration, increase the, your uh, levels of uh, the, whatever the levels have to be increased, have to be done in a slow or graded fashion. Super. Then coming uh, to the... My, uh, here comes one more question just from my mind because uh, yeah, if yeah, you yeah, allow sure. me to ask. Uh, is there any danger of is the, uh, there is a trend in uh, youth to become a zero figure kind of thing and uh, leave everything? Is it dangerous for heart also? Yes, definitely. So, I mean, if if it's okay, I mean, that, that is how you have so many things like anorexia and all those things coming up. So that also is not good for the heart or for any other, for the whole body itself, it's not good. So it's all, it always has to be done in a healthy moderation, I would say, rather than uh, totally, you know, like hitting the gym for two hours, three hours in a day, three hours for a day, and then getting exhausted. And it doesn't prove anything. And it has to be done in a gradual way. In fact, if you go to any gym, the trainer will first tell you the same thing, that it has to be done in a graded fashion. And uh, please don't expect results in two months, three months. Like it has to be a slow thing. So we have to take it slowly. Exactly. So, uh, Thank you. And, and eating healthy. So that's another important thing. So we can start off by, uh, you know, cutting short the amount of food we eat. Like the, maybe like if you're having two chapatis, have one and a half chapati. Or if you're having a bowl of rice, maybe like reduce the portion. Something like that. So, and also incorporate more fruits and vegetables in the diet. So, and if unavoidable, and if you have to have high calories uh, food stuff, maybe in smaller quantities, you can switch to smaller amount of such foods. 
and limiting salt intake is another uh, thing which is recommended. So most of these recommendations come from the heart associations. So um, this is a rough guide or about like which are the grains uh, to choose and uh, the ones which we have to limit or avoid. So maybe in some like you now this is a broad uh, uh, table. So most often in Indian uh, scenario, they all eat rice in the South India and uh, wheat in the North. So now slowly everyone is becoming aware and they have switched over to millets, multigrains, whole wheat, or uh, you know, the, even the brown uh, rice. All these things have, you know, people are aware about it. So I need not go too much in depth about this, I feel. So uh, also the uh, recommended uh, amount of fat which we need to take also has been given by the American Heart Association. So these are also like, they say that the trans fat and saturated fats have to be avoided or kept as limited as or as minimal as possible. So out of this, they say that uh, these vegetable oil and nut, uh, oil, nut oils which we use are uh, the ones which are much better than using uh, uh, hydrogenated oils, the coconut oil or the palm oil. So this is where most of our uh, fats come from. And also, to in, if you talk about animal fat, animal fat contains more of saturated fats. So that's the reason why everybody has been advocating you know, to limit it or to cut it off. Then um, when it comes to proteins, um, you, uh, the good proteins are these low fat milk, yogurt and cheese and uh, eggs, fish is again another good one uh, and legumes that is the sprouts and legumes. So those are the ones which where the protein content increases over a period of time when we soak it. So it increases by about 30%. That's why now again, people are slowly becoming aware of it and they are incorporating uh, more of these sprouts and legumes into their uh, regular diet. And, uh, and uh, the ones which we have to limit or avoid is the uh, full fat milk and other dairy products. Then um, hot dog and sausages, all these things, most often it is the Western, uh, this thing, bacon, all that. So these are the things to be limited or avoided. So of course, we can't say that, you know, you have to completely stop, completely become a vegetarian. It's not possible for, not, not possible for everyone. So it's better to limit it rather than uh, say, you know, give up. So uh, I became a vegetarian by choice some 20 years ago and I have not gone back to it. So I don't know, it's like, I, I'm not even consciously trying to be a vegetarian, but it has happened. So, and I know about a lot of people who have, slowly switched over to vegetarianism and even have gone into vegan diets. So I guess it's all about uh, motivating and sustaining in the, uh, you know, having that uh, self-motivation most, most likely. Um, then another important point is to get adequate sleep. So they say that at least seven to nine hours of sleep is uh, mandatory. So for people uh, who get, like you know, less than six hours of sleep, they are most likely, uh, twice likely to have a stroke or a heart attack. When it comes uh, comes to like those people who are having sleep for more than who sleep for more than six to eight hours per night. Then another important uh, thing is to reduce the stress, depression, and anxiety. So for this, most of us are uh, aware of meditation, yoga, pranayam, how it has such a beneficial effect. So apart from this, even Reiki, graphotherapy, all these things can be used as tools. So what is good? I mean, if somebody finds meditation useful, they should pursue it. If somebody likes pranayama more, maybe they should do more of it. So it's like we have to find the tools which are suitable for ourselves. So when you feel that whatever you are dealing with a particular stress or depression, whatever you're dealing is you're not able to handle it, then better to seek a psychiatrist's help go in for counseling or psychotherapy, any of these modalities. But, you know, becoming aware, once you are aware of the problem, it has to be dealt with. Dr. Chandna? Yes. Uh, I want to take the opportunity to understand because uh, in your bio also, we all read that uh, graphotherapy. So our viewers and uh, myself also want to know that what is graphotherapy? So graphotherapy is wherein you use your handwriting uh, 
to reduce your stress and uh, it it works so, sort of like a meditation so for those people who say that i can't sit in meditation for uh, long hours in grapho graphotherapy does help in uh, achieving the same kind of uh, results so i learned graphotherapy a few years ago and um, uh, it, it's like uh, making people sit and write like you know one page or two pages of a particular uh, uh, thing like for example a loop pattern or you have various patterns like that in graphotherapy so that is uh, sort of helpful to uh, reduce stress and even they say uh, all that uh, doodling helps so it's graphotherapy is also similar to that so these kind of things like because you do it with so much of concentration you 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 know it's like sort of it becomes like you know your subconscious becomes sort of active and you go into a meditative state as you very, do so, very interesting like as i said there are many tools many tools to address the same problem so it's all like about how um, happy you are to use a particular tool so uh so why are we talking about so much about all these factors because now what we see is that there is something some entity called the premature coronary artery disease that is whatever was happening for in the in the past uh, few decades ago maybe people used to have heart attack in the age group of you know after 60 or after 70 but that we are seeing in the younger age group now so in yeah. fact in our hospital we are even Uh, we have a study on this so there are a few group of doctors who are involved in a study on this uh, premature coronary artery disease going on so usually um, now what they say is that it, at least 10% of uh, men below the age of 45 are affected and uh, they say the risk of having a heart disease after 50 is you know it's increasing definitely it's increasing at an alarming rate so uh, they say that uh, as i have mentioned the framingham heart study itself says that uh, all these factors like you know the cholesterol blood pressure diabetes obesity and smoking uh, all these factors will add up and uh, if none if a person doesn't have any of these factors then his chance of having a cardiovascular disease is just 5% but even when he reaches the age of 95 but imagine if you have one or two factors itself it actually increases it by about 67% so you see the uh, you know the drastic uh, jump in the risk because of all these uh, uh, important things so that's the reason why lifestyle modification has become so important so what are the wellness markers so how do we know that we are actually doing well or uh, you know it's like sort of a benchmark it's like to say if you have a healthy resting heart rate that is if your heart rate is well within between 60 to 100 it is considered as a healthy resting heart rate then if you have a optimal blood pressure so that's why we say that uh, you know people should have a uh, yearly checkup or you know it's like so that all these things parameters especially after the age of 40 i think we should look into all these things and uh, sort of every year it's better to have um Uh, make a note of what is the levels and then how we are doing so then to maintain optimal cholesterol and triglyceride levels then uh, having a normal ecg optimal blood glucose levels and also when you are working out at the gym they uh, this is uh, uh, this is a one this is a new thing which i learned that you know for 3 minutes if you uh, exercise and then you get the heart rate i knew that the maximum heart rate goes up but i didn't know that so if it is 70 to 85% of the maximum that is 220 minus your age so that is a maximum heart rate which you need to achieve with uh, treadmill or with uh, all these things so if you are even 70% of that then it means that your heart is doing fine and if your crp levels are low that means to say that the inflammation is less so these are all the things which are like wellness markers so from wellness to move into happiness we need to know something about the heart heart chakra rather than the physical heart so heart chakra is the fourth chakra which is found along the spine and it uh, bridges the uh, lower three chakras and the upper three chakras and uh, it mainly uh, takes care of the heart lungs and the thymus so it is associated with the color green and the element is air 
obviously because lungs <laughs> and it is associated with the cardiac plexus of nerves see one interesting thing about this is uh, about the uh, knowing about the spiritual thing about the chakras and relating is you can relate how the anatomy can be easily relatable with the chakra system so chakras are all those major energy points where you have the uh, plexus of nerves like you have cardiac plexus which is associated with the heart chakra chakra you have similarly the solar plexus which is associated with the celiac plexus of nerves so these chakras are the energy points where you have plexus of nerves so in, similar to that you have the um, in the uh, heart chakra region you have the uh, cardiac plexus of nerves that is the sympathetic which is the t1 to t4 segments which arise from the spinal cord and the parasympathetic which is the vagus nerve so this is for all the medico people who are interested to know about the uh, anatomical correlation or the applied aspect so uh, the heart chakra is associated with uh, certain behavioral characteristics so this is like you know if you see a person or if you interact with a person and he has few of these qualities then you can say that he has a active or a good heart chakra or a well functioning heart chakra there is a capacity to love to integrate that is he can balance between the uh, materialistic and spiritual aspirations without giving too much weightage to one over the other then um, having of course having uh, less amount of ego or i would say a healthy ego so healthy ego is important for our uh, well being as well then um, a person who can have or achieve good connection with nature with people and uh, who uh, can appreciate beauty in all things and all situations and has good deep and meaningful relationships so um what are the things which now if somebody has some uh, issues with the heart chakra or maybe it is underdeveloped or it is uh, inactive or it is blocked in the worst scenario so what are the things uh, you can see that so, such kind of people are the ones who feel extremely jealous who are very insecure who are who are all the time like you know um being defensive and um, feel that they are a victim of situation of people and most often they are uh, like a recluse uh, no no anti social beings not into mingling with people they hold grudges and uh, will not be able to forgive so easily so um, whenever the heart chakra is active and uh, it has blossomed well the, the such kind of people will have empathy and uh, towards other people and will have the ability to trust themselves first and the and others also so that way they'll be able to relate to other people and uh, have good relationships so how do we unblock the heart chakra or how do you uh, to phrase it better i would say how to allow the blossoming of the heart chakra or the awakening of the heart chakra so meditation is the groundwork and uh, more for most of the chakras chakra activation you have specific bija mantras you have specific uh, way to go about it and um, any meditation for that matter it will activate all the chakras starting from the muladhara to the sahasrara then pranayama so in pranayama you have specific pranayamas which are uh, specific to the heart chakra like the anulom vilom or the nadi shodhana so um, i even had one of the patients we had uh, was very well aware about yoga and pranayam so he uh, when he asked me about it i did advise him to practice anulom vilom so it's you know patients also will ask you such questions sometimes like what yoga what pranayam whether they can practice it so if we have, we are aware about these things then we, it's it becomes much easier to advise so um to blossom to allow the heart chakra to blossom another thing is to uh, practice self care then uh, to cultivate self compassion so not to like you know unnecessarily criticize our own selves or you know um, that in 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 fact it becomes a vicious uh, cycle where you know it dents your self esteem dents your self worth so i think it's most important before 
somebody else accepts you or before you look for acceptance from outside you have to accept yourself with, uh, and uh, be comfortable with who you are then spending time with family and friends this is the most important thing so uh, i would say with uh, friends are like an extended family and um, all those people who nurture you or who will help you to you know feel happy or be happy i think you should make it a point to keep in touch with uh, them and uh, meet them often so that itself will keep you in good spirits and also it sort of nurtures your relationships then spending time in nature so this is a very important thing which i feel is very underrated because we have uh, so many buildings and so many uh, things coming up that uh, there are hardly any green spaces uh, amidst us so make it a point to spend time in nature and uh, have an attitude of gratitude so no matter what the situation is in, you are placed in no matter where you are whatever your work atmosphere may be have an have an attitude of gratitude that there is something good in every situation there is something good in every uh, uh, change of things that happen so make the best use of wherever you are and have a sense of gratitude that there are a few things which are going well and maybe like you know um, if you start looking for goodness in situations and goodness in people you will find it it's not difficult okay chandra uh, can i ask my question and uh, want to have a suggestion from you yeah uh, sure. what you think uh, just uh, randomly how many uh, heart hospitals or other hospitals are having these kind of things in their hospital they are training or they are aware about this thing first is this and how much you think that there should be a different wing in every hospital that uh, these things are must and there should be certain wing and certain trainers or even doctor should be aware if he is not having or she is not having time then uh, some other person should be there in the hospital who can right. teach that that's that's very important in our hospital we have a yoga teacher we have it's a government hospital but we have a yoga teacher we have there is one particular uh, room which is a meditation and a yoga room there is uh, so we have you know all those patients uh, who seek all these kind of help they are given uh, help and uh, we also have a small gym so, so so many things are there so i think it's very important it's very important to have a holistic approach uh, when we are treating patients it can't be just you know to find something treat it and send them and then it's the next patient comes and i i think we should not work like a factory <laughs> i used to know that i think every hospital should be the hospital yeah. all thanks to our director he has incorporated all those things and give her gratitude so, and congratulations to director also because yeah. he's doing a great job yes he is he is doing an amazing job so um then imp- another important thing is to achieve a uh, work life balance so all work and no play makes everyone dull so we know that we have been hearing to it from quite some time so having a good work life balance is important uh being cardiac surgeons most of them are busy most of them will be working from morning till evening and by the time they finish surgeries it's like so exhausting so having maybe even 15 minutes of uh time for maybe to read books or to paint or photography on weekends or something even that is enough to you know bring some kind of a, a freshness into their uh, routine uh, practice apart from of course listening to music or if somebody is interested in dance i think they should go for it so all these things will help you you know there are multiple aspects like uh, multiple tools as i said not just to keep your heart happy it's like to keep yourself happy also there are so many things uh, it's just that we have to start using them so most of it <laughs> yes uh, sorry uh, again because there is a lot of curiosity uh, amongst us Uh, that uh, we uh, know that you are a photographer we want to know that uh, you have mentioned it here also how this hobby developed in you because i have seen very few uh, cardiothoracic surgeon because they are not busy in the day and not a guest they have the emergencies also yes yes we do so, correct so so how you, you pursue your hobby and uh, how it started 
well it started in my high school so uh, in my high school we were exposed to all this bird watching and we had these sessions so we had we had nature camps so when i used to go there i the birds used to fascinate me a lot because you know it's very difficult to and that time i didn't have a camera i didn't have that zoom lens i didn't have any of those things so you had to be extremely uh, quick to spot the birds and whatever little teaching they had uh, taught during that time it used to get me so interested in them so after that uh, when i came to general surgery was around that time i bought my first camera which was just a regular camera so didn't have that uh, zoom lens and all that so that kind of um, started uh, you know getting me interested in nature and you know it's it's more like uh, photography is something like a painting it's like you what you capture and how you compose a particular picture so it tells so much about the photographer themselves and also about you know how artistic they are so that developed and then after that once i finished my um, uh, of course uh, once i entered cardiac surgery it was a very very uh, you know intense course and also like we had uh, you know uh, those few few years i don't think i i gave much time for any of my hobbies so after that once i started working i had enough money also by that time to buy all the expensive zoom lenses and zoom cam and, and the good camera so that's when it started so there then my um, interest in bird watching and uh, bird photography developed and uh, i'm still not uh, i'm still improving my skills in that because i hardly used to get time so it's only weekends maybe some 2 to 3 hours i would go and i click a lot of birds then slowly edit them and keep posting them so that's what would happen great because uh, we are watching all the pictures on your facebook page also and uh, <laughs> we will hope that in the end we will be able to see more pictures uh, clicked by you sure <laughs> hopefully uh, thank you then now um, another important this is one thing which i have learned is that laughter is still the best medicine so whenever you are stressed whenever you are depressed or whenever you are ang- anxious watch comedy shows there are so many stand up comedians there are so many people who uh, who are out there on youtube there are so many videos who are you know which get posted where to make people laugh i think we should make use of those things and uh, it has an amazing effect it really has an amazing effect it can get you out of your depression or whatever so this is one of the things which i follow so that's why i put it up and uh, most importantly not to compare yourself with others so that is where all the stress anxiety everything comes up because of that um, feeling jealous and all you know everything if eventually dents your self confidence and your self worth so i feel that you know we should stop comparing ourselves with others we have to compare ourselves with what we were in the past and how we have been improvising or how we are bettering ourselves and uh, how we can you, of course if there are people who have achieved that that should be a source of inspiration that you know i want to do the same thing maybe i want to you know like it should just be a source of inspiration it should not become a competition or a unhealthy uh, um sort of you know competitions can turn ugly also so i think those things have to be avoided for a peaceful life and a happy life so uh dr sandeep i am sharing the slide which you have shared on mindful minds so i really love this one so uh, this is this talks about uh, getting rid of toxic people and uh, toxic situations yeah it's very important see once you recognize that things are not okay once you recognize that things are really you know getting toxic either you have to change the place or change the particular friendship or really relationship whatever have the courage to do that and uh, that that can also be one of the uh, therapies you know like you know staying out staying away from certain people or certain situations may be beneficial and there's nothing wrong in choosing the kind of people you want to be associated with or the kind of people you you are comfortable with then uh, stay committed wherever whenever things get things are bound to get tough wherever no matter what career you choose no matter what whether you choose medical whether whether you choose engineering or or law or anything there will be rough patches there will be tough situations but i think the point is to stay committed and to just continue the journey because things will smoothen at some point then learning from the past mistakes and to keep building our skill set so it can be 
anywhere, even if you're a housewife or you, you're a whatever, like whether you're working, not working, it is like something like, you know, uh, any skill for that matter. Uh, we have to keep bettering ourselves, whatever we are doing, and we should love what we are doing. And uh, also to invest in ourselves, like, you know, uh, you don't have to like, you know, brag about whatever you are doing, but slowly I think success will show up if we start investing in ourselves. And these are a few pointers which I have felt, uh, you know, they're very nice to share. And these are the ones which have resonated very well with me. So I am sharing a few of these. So what important thing is universe is not in a hurry. We are, that's the reason for all the anxiety and stress. So university, I mean, the universe doesn't give you timelines or deadlines that you should have a house by this age, you should have, um, you should get married at this age or have kids at this age. You know, it's like the stress comes out of all the deadlines and timelines that we put on ourselves. Like you have to get promotion at this time. I want to get ahead of these people. I want to do this. You know, I think we should have one path for ourselves and we should concentrate only on bettering ourselves and improvising ourselves. I'm not saying that, uh, you know, if uh, just keep quiet and uh, allow things to happen, no. If you have to work towards a promotion, do your publications, do whatever exams you have to clear, clear them. So, but at the same time, don't stress yourself. I mean, it will eventually happen. It has to happen. Then uh, another important thing which you can recognize in people is that uh, the way they react, the spiritual people especially, the way they respond or react to those people who try to trigger you. So that response itself sets them apart. And I think that's how they can uh, handle situations in a better way. And importantly, if you can see the positive side of everything, every people, every person that you meet and uh, the, every situation you are put in, I think we can live a much richer life than what people would- and now, Can I ask a question here? Yeah. Uh, the, all the picture we have seen are clicked by you? Yes. Oh, great. <laughs> They're beautiful. Can we go back and see again so that uh, just two, three pictures of birds, they were beautiful, especially the pigeons. Yeah. This was, uh, there is Lalbagh Botanical Garden. It's a very beautiful place in Bangalore. You should visit it. It's, uh, it has amazing set of birds. Great. Amazing picture. Yeah. This is a sunbird. So, um, Eventually, like, you know, all of us will not be now, whatever I spoke about also, it's not that I'm following every single point. It's not possible. So every time we have to reset, readjust, restart, refocus as many times as we can. And we have to keep bettering ourselves. Like everything we have to like, you know, slowly incorporate like anything, uh, like it could be meditation, it could be exercises, it could be any, the change in your dietary uh, style. Everything has to be done gradually and step by step. So there's no need to criticize ourselves or no need to feel bad about it because that again will kind of push you back into, you know, a negative emotion. And so that's the reason I have put it, put this uh, statement here because I feel it resonates very well that, you know, you have to, you have to restart sometimes and you have to refocus and readjust as the situations progress. And eventually success will happen. So how do you measure success? Most people think that having a high salary job or a high job title, you know, defines success, but it's not. A better measure would be to have a balance in everything, like have a good mental health, have a good physical health and do what you like and uh, like what you do. If you can't, you know, get what you want, maybe you should just start liking what you are actually getting to do. And- uh, 90% is free time, liking what you do, physical health and mental health. And near about 50% is mental health and physical health. Yes. Super. And job title and salary of is only 10 to 15%. Yes. That's a small portion. I mean, I'm not negating that, you know, we are, we do need salary and we, we do need uh, that for the well-being, but that should not be the one to define success or to define, that should not be the only goal of your job. So what I would like to say is that a satisfied life is better than a successful life. Successful by that definition, uh, what you know, the world says a successful person is. So that's what it refers to here. 
and uh, rather than focusing on living a perfect life i think uh, we should focus on living a happy life and uh, be happy and some reason will come along <laughs> meaning to say if you are in an attitude of happiness i think there will be more such things which get which keep coming into life so i think with that uh, even today's session is a reason to be happy and watching these beautiful pictures <laughs> thank you thanks sandeep uh, if you have some questions any question uh, from uh, dr chandna you can uh, send it in the chat box we will read out and ask from our expert dr chandna uh, dr pk agarwal want to say something uh, dr pk we are uh, unmuting you and uh, you can start your video also please Yes, Doctor P K. Doctor P K, you have to unmute yourself. Doctor P K, you have to unmute. Doctor P K, you are not audible, uh, so you can type your uh, question in the chat box. any other question yes great value adding session many thanks beautiful pictures ma'am great talk someone said that hurry worry and curry are the main problems in the life very empowering session ma'am do you have view on covid vaccine from heart perspective heart perspective <laughs> i think covid vaccine no, it's a, it's it's our duty to take the vaccine and i have taken both the doses <laughs> it was a great it's important doctor. because uh, right now if you see the situation i think all of us should be uh, it's, it's a social responsibility now we can wait for another one minute after that we can go into meditation if there is no question only compliments are there no question uh, chanda ma'am <laughs> thank you so you. much ma'am <laughs> there is one uh, technical question uh, someone is asking my daughter has hole in her heart uh, which the doctor said can be closed with a catheter as of now no symptoms can this be closed she is 6 uh. years old uh i think it's better to talk to the cardiologist and uh, they will suggest you uh, the right time and how to go about it uh, most of these holes can be closed now with intervention don't require surgery so it's a good thing it's better to get it done so uh, we will request our viewers to ask uh, a general questions not a specific questions from the expert so it will be value for valuable for everyone very nice session excellent pictures thank you so much thanks doctor so there has only compliments no question is that they dr chandna and i uh, hope they have understood whatever i have spoken <laughs> it was beautiful especially uh, because someone if someone is speaking from heart and someone is presume that uh, there is nothing to understand it's uh, it's very obvious and uh, i think uh, many of the viewers will start photography and they don't know how costly hobby is this <laughs> you know that <laughs> <laughs> it's a very costly hobby it is not it everyone is. Can, not yeah. everyone can pursue that so looking at your picture everyone want to click that picture and no but a... then you have many basic cameras now which do a very good job even the mobile cameras you know uh, now the competition is from the mobile cameras <laughs> some of my friends posting better images than mine and saying see with mobile i can do a better job <laughs> so i think a lot of people are into photography these days <laughs> yes because it was straight from the heart from the heart of uh, cardiothoracic surgeon and it was really really amazing session because when some cardiothoracic surgeon who is so much busy in her life she speaks about heart chakra she speaks about uh, gratitude she speaks about uh, how we can be more compassionate and how the things can be treated without minimal medicines also Uh, that's a eye opener for everyone that's why every week uh, we discuss we come on the, our channel with some doctor who is pursuing and uh, having a different perspective dr channa 
uh, in the morning i got some uh, message and i want to transfer that message to you that you are the amongst 1% of doctors who are doing this 99% of doctors are not doing this oh. and someone you know, hope that more doctors should be in this league and yeah. uh, our pursuit is that uh, more doctors more uh, healers should join this uh, uh, this movement uh, with this uh, doctor ranjan and after that we can go into meditation thanks thanks dr sandeep and dr ranjan i think i have to thank you people a lot <laughs> Yeah. for getting me into this place is all us and uh, dr ranjan yeah thank you dr chandana for your uh, valuable photographs with uh, wisdom thanks sabhi participants aapka bhi dhanyawad aap har baar judte hain is baar ek technical mistake hui lekin fir bhi zyada logon ne manage kar liya to this presence this is also reveals presence of mind to hamare sath judte rahe hum har baar aapke samne ek alag alag expert laate rahenge jo hamare liye regular audience hai unke liye to easy mamla hai it's the same time and same zoom link ha jo naye log hai unko thoda unke liye thodi paisani ho gayi hogi हमारा जो ये सेशन है इसका फीडबैक हमें हमारे सोशल मीडिया पे जरूर दें उसका लिंक चैट में पोस्ट किया जा रहा है आपके डिटेल फीडबैक से हमें मोटिवेशन मिलता है कि हम किस तरह के स्पीकर को बुलाएं और स्पीकर डॉक्टर्स को होलिस्टिक हेल्थ आगे कैसे बढ़े I think uh, Suma want to say something. Suma, I have unmuted you. If you want to say anything uh, in the short, you can about the session. and uh, dr chandna if you are asking your number so uh, if you allow we can share the number or you can share your email also yes, yes. Uh, i think in my powerpoint presentation i mentioned my number all right yes. again we will share in the chat sure, box sure please go ahead all right so uh, dr chandna thank you very much for coming on uh, spiritual doctor of holistic health you are integral part of uh, spiritual health for holistic health family uh, i am honored <laughs> <laughs> right now we can go into our meditation session so i will request you to uh, take us to the journey of beautiful meditation i think uh, you people should <laughs> take us to that <laughs> okay <laughs> okay what about the graphotherapy some uh, some more insight some practical insight or something relevant graphotherapy have not got much time to practice but there are few people who have uh, been able to like you know uh, find out which uh, you know people who are afflicted with uh, heart disease or people who have high bp they have a particular uh, signs in the handwriting so which can be picked up and which can be worked out and uh, uh, some people who are actively involved in it are working on it so they say that you can diagnose diseases and i'm not saying that it has to be like you know used as a substitute to our our diagnostic modalities but that also is one of the ways in which you can you would say you can pick it up pick up the early signs and uh, train people and people have seen results with that so i know a graphotherapist who is uh, in my facebook page so she is uh, doing a lot of uh, health related graphotherapy so i don't have much uh, i have learned graphotherapy but i am not been uh, i don't have much time to use all those uh, modalities so uh, it, but it was that. a nice uh, thing to learn we will also uh, share that uh, number and link of that uh, person yes, so that yes. uh, if someone want to learn graphotherapy uh, he or she i think there it. are a lot of uh, graphotherapists all over so oh. and there are many centers many uh, places Uh, in all over india there are people who are into graphotherapy 